Hi, this is Laura. I'm the CEO of VMV Hypoallergenics. We're here to save the world's skin with the safest, most proven effective care on the planet. And today I will be doing another allergen or not an allergen, which will be on essential oils. Before I get started, don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the notification bell. Also, we've got lots and lots and lots of great skin tell on our blog, which is vmvinskin.com. And if you would like to shop our products, our validated hypoallergenic products, almost all of which uh, contain monolaurin, as well as our clinically published organic first and cold pressed virgin coconut oil, you can do so at vmvhypoallergenics.com and vmvhypoallergenics.ph. So Allergen Not an Allergen is a really popular campaign that we do every April. So if you haven't yet, check out our Instagram and Facebook and take a guess as to whether or not the thing that we're featuring that day is an allergen or not, and you could win. We pick daily randomized winners every single day. Some key things to clarify. When we talk about allergens, we're talking about contact allergens, skin allergens. Skin allergies do operate differently from IgE-mediated um, antibody-involved allergies like with dander and pollen, um, some foods. Skin allergies are T-cell mediated, so they're two different modalities. And actually, if you prick test positive for something, the chances are actually really good that you can still use it on your skin unless you also patch test positive for it. So for the purposes of allergen, not an allergen, we will be talking specifically about skin contact allergens, and they're determined by patch testing. And we use as a reference uh, publications of the top contact allergens by contact dermatitis specialists, such as the North American Contact Dermatitis Group of the American Contact Dermatitis Society and the European Surveillance System on Contact Allergies, as well as De Groot and all these other wonderful experts on contact dermatitis. And they're based on multiple patch tests, 28,000 plus plus patch tests on people around the world. So the other important thing to remember when we talk about these things as contact allergens is just because something is a contact allergen doesn't mean that you can't use it. We suggest getting a patch test so that you can see more specifically what you in particular can and cannot use. We sometimes will feature specific ingredients like um, benzyl alcohol or a particular fragrance mix that you might see in a typical patch test tray and other times we will talk about stuff things that you would never see on a patch test tray like a mobile phone cover for example but that we are exposed to or handle a lot and in those cases we'll break down the thing in detail so that for example a mobile phone cover we will say yeah a contact allergen because usually there's rubber or rubberized plastic, uh, there's usually dyes involved, black or um, bright colors, uh, plastics that usually have some sort of preservation and colorants and things like that and benzophenones, UV protectants and stuff. So yeah, something like this we'd call an allergen. So getting on to our feature today, we will be talking about essential oils. Um, so yeah, I have in my hand ilang ilang and lemongrass. Um, so allergen, not an allergen. If you guessed allergens, very much so. Um, vast majority of essential oils are top contact allergens. So we're talking ilang ilang, lavender, mint, citromint, lemongrass, uh, lemon, orange, rose, chamomile, almost everything that sort of comes to mind as an essential oil is a top contact allergen. In fact, most of them are on patch test trays as such, right? Even tea tree oil, which is not an essential oil, but people kind of sometimes associate it as part of that family. This applies to essential oils in little roll-ons that people might use here or here for nausea, as a mood lifter, uh, anything sort of therapeutic, to massage oils, to aromatherapy for the room, like little drops in a diffuser, for example. So if you're seeing a reaction to an essential oil, 
if it's to something like a little roll on here or here, you might see it in a very particular pattern, a more controlled area um, of reaction, which it really sort of coincides with the area of contact or most contact. That's one. If you use it as a massage oil or in a bath oil or in a body wash or a lotion, you would see it more generalized in the body. But you can also, this can also very easily become airborne. And then we see a lot of airborne contact dermatitis. I think that's fairly obvious when we're talking about air diffusers and scented candles. But even just using it on your body can also become an airborne contact dermatitis. In which case, you can see it in things like reaction sort of under the nose, but also on the face where you might not be applying any of these oils. It's just from the essential oils wafting up and affecting the skin on your face, for example. Classic things that we might see from a reaction to essential oils would be redness, itching, flaking, certainly a trigger of sensitive skin conditions like eczema and atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, maybe even rosacea. Um, and, and this is key for people who don't think they have sensitive skin but are dealing with hyperpigmentations, dark blotches and spots, they're huge photoallergens, very, very big contributors to melasma and hyperpigmentation. So again, just having an aromatherapeutic candle or a diffuser around the room. Certainly we've seen lavender farmers, calamansi farmers have tremendous hyperpigmentation on the face just from growing, handling these substances. This, the allergenicity and photoallergenicity of a lot of these oils is not dependent on how natural or organic they are. They can be 100% certified organic, maybe even grown by you and mortar and pestled by you and extracted by you. They're still top contact allergens. When it comes to scents, they're actually relatively few that are not top contact allergens. Um, coconut oil would be one, not the scent of, not a scent that is made to smell like coconut oil, actual coconut oil as it's extracted, that very subtle scent. Um, coffee is another one that's not an allergen. And again, we're not talking about coffee flavor or coffee fragrance. We're talking about actual coffee when you grind the beans. That is sort of a scent that's really not problematic. But essential oils um, for aromatherapy, scented candles, bonds and roll-ons, massage oils, very much top contact allergens, very much on the lists consistently of published top contact allergens around the world. And they can actually become worse in the heat. So when they're used in a diffuser or in a candle or in a massage oil and there's heat involved, the reactivity can actually be worse. So be extra careful in that sense. <music> A little bit more about us. Again, we are VMV Hypoallergenics. We are the safest, most proven effective care on the planet. And our safety is based basically on allergen omission. We take all known top contact allergens and remove them from a formulation or as many of them as possible. And we have a proprietary grading system that's sort of like an SPF, but for allergen omission. And it shows you immediately how many allergens are not in a formulation. If an allergen happens to be in a formulation, it will be clearly marked also on the ingredients list so you can see if it's not a substance that you patch tested positive for because it's really unlikely you'll be allergic to all 109 contact allergens, then you can still use the product. So it's a nice, easy way to see it. And a published study in a top contact dermatitis peer-reviewed journal in the world showed less than 0.1% reactions to our products in over 30 years because of the VH rating system. So yeah, very safe. In terms of efficacy, we regularly publish our clinical studies. We do a lot of randomized, double-blind, evidence-based clinical trials for ourselves and for other companies. And um, it's a pretty big deal to get one clinical study published in a peer-reviewed journal. Thanks to my mother, who is our founding dermatologist and dermatopathologist, we have over 80. So we're big into safety and efficacy. So that's it for today for Allergen Not an Allergen. Remember to check Allergen Not an Allergen all of April on our Facebook and Instagram. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please don't forget to make comments. Let us know if there's anything else you'd like to know. Is it an allergen or is it not? And any other questions that you might have. And certainly share this with 
someone if you think it was helpful. And don't forget to watch our weekly live streams. Um, all of April, we're going to be talking about allergens as well. Otherwise, we cover everything from the most basic stuff in skin to your most frequently asked questions. Thanks very much. Be safe and take care. Bye. Thank you.